Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Technique Tuesday. My name is Ali Board, and I am broadcasting across several platforms, one of which this morning is my Facebook page, Learning to Paint with Alison C. Board. So if you are watching via that page, you're probably watching me live, in which case you're very welcome. But you might be watching me via my YouTube channel, or you might be watching me on my website, www.learningtopaint.com. UK. No matter where you are in the world or how you're watching me today, you are very welcome. Thank you very much for joining me. This is part seven of a project that I have been working on over the last few weeks and the last part today. Um, it's going to be a slightly extended broadcast today because uh, unfortunately there is no Technique Tuesday next week. But that's simply because I'm off on my adventures again uh, with my mum this time. So I thought I would do you an extended extended project. However, just because I am not broadcasting next Tuesday doesn't mean that I am not going to set you a challenge. But I'm going to tell you more about that at the end of today's broadcast. So you're going to have to stick all the way through to the end to hear about the challenge that I'm going to set you in my place next week. Now, if you are watching live, then you will probably already know that I do like to try and give you a shout out. And we uh, always award a virtual, non-realistic prize for the first comment of the day and of course it goes to Martina who is always very quick off the mark. Uh, good morning Martina. Now who else have we got in the room? I'm sure there are other people. Uh, Joe, good morning. Ali, good morning. Anne, Rosie over in France. Uh, Julie in Melbourne, good morning. Maureen, Lynn is in the room. Ruth is in the room too. Who else have we got? Oh you're coming in so fast I can't keep up with you. Uh, yes Anne is saying it's frosty here. It's, uh, it's not frosty, it's very foggy here in Dorset. Uh, Linda P, good morning. Uh, Joe, Pam, Jane on the Isle of Man, who's saying it's dry. I'm, uh, I wish you uh, continued good weather, Jane. Uh, what else? Uh, Joe was saying she thought she had the first comment in, but it disappeared. That's annoying, isn't it? Uh, Kate is saying uh, that she's got to go out, but we'll probably catch up later. That's no problem. Not, not a problem at all. That's why I archive it everywhere. Angie, Jan, Shani, good morning. Um, and Rabina, good morning to all of you who are watching live. I always appreciate you taking the time and effort to tune in. Good morning, Paula. Uh, good morning, Anne H. Uh, oh, Anne H is saying, good to be uh, watching live for a change. Very nice to have you with us. Now, what have I been doing? I have been working on a painting called A Concert of Birds. Started off with a bit of inspiration from going to... Uh, a few um, elbow gigs, elbow being uh, the band that I will follow to the ends of the earth and uh, using them and uh, some of the metaphors and some of the imagery that they use in their lyrics and starting there, use finding a found poem, reappropriating it, experimenting with all sorts of things. And if you haven't been able to see any of that, go back over to the Technique Tuesday blog on the website. It's under the free resources part of the website and you'll be able to watch all all parts of it. I haven't done anything away from the camera. I've done it all live for you so that we can chat about it. Now, while I've been rabbiting on, who else has popped up in the room? Dee is in the room. Good morning, Barbara. Um, there are a lot of Anne's in the morning, Anne B. You're absolutely right. Good morning, Kathy. Um, and uh, Dee has said a few. I don't think she's talking about Anne's. I think she might be talking about the number of elbow gigs. And good morning, Sally. <laughs> it's lovely to have you all here. Right, let's take you to the overhead camera and you can see exactly uh, what I've been working on. A uh, bit of an insight into some of the materials that I'm going to be using today. But here is where it all started. That found poem that I chopped up, stuck into this memory card. We added a bit of texture just for the hell of it. Um, but that is where we started. A concert of birds you can see up there. And I made my way through this project, adding various bits of collage. We added, we added, added, oh dear, started already. We added uh, the mirrorball tiles. Uh, we added some textures through some stencils. We've got bees. We added some collage materials. We've got a bit of text going on in there. We added some stamping down there. It's been a kind of very organic uh, process. 
in that I haven't overthought it. I haven't tried to plan it. It did start to manifest itself because... I really wasn't sure where this was going and then I had uh, an epiphany a couple of weeks ago when I started uh, to paint uh, my bird on. We haven't really got to the bottom of what brand of bird this is. Um, I'm not going to state what sort of bird it is, I'll let you, let you make your own decisions about that. Very impressionistic, I haven't finished it off. The only part that I did in a lot of detail was up here with the beak and the eye um, and I did that with some Posca pens but there's a few things that I want to finish off today I want to finish off the edge now I was going to do that off camera but I thought oh do you know what it might be a nice process for you to see to understand how you can finish off the edges of a box canvas and then I've got a bit of a trick up my sleeve with a particular product that I'm going to burnish over the surface of this just to kind of pick out a few little highlights and all of the information about this plus an awful lot more a little bit more of insight into how I paint this is of course on that blog plus uh, past blogs have got links to all the materials <clears throat> And uh, today's blog has got a link to the very, very special uh, material that I'm going to use. Shall I give you a sneak peek? There we go. Me, me. There we go. Just a little bit of a flash. You're going to have to stay tuned. Uh, good morning, Thea. Right, let's get on to uh, finish off the edge of this, shall we? Now, I've got, usually I have um, this tipped up a little bit so that I can see it better. But I've got my camera and my workbench flat today so that uh, I've got a little bit more room to move and so you can see it a little more easily. So I'm just going to put that to one side and I'm going to bring this into the middle. So what am I going to do first? I want to be able to paint this edge. Now there's lots of schools of thought on this. There are some artists that say you should leave this white so that you can sort of see all the, the workings out, as it were. But me and my uh, organised, uh, tidy mind don't really like the thought of that. So I need to paint it. Then, of course, there's a question of what colour do you paint it? Do I pick out some of the pale colours up here? What is it uh, that I'm going to do? And uh, effectively, the, the answer is that it doesn't really matter what colour you paint it, it's absolutely up to you. But I'm going to paint it a nice dark colour because I want these uh, pails to show up a little bit more. Now I could, with my brush, I could mix up my colour and I could very carefully go down the edges of my canvas, trying very hard to not let that colour encroach over the edge. Or I could uh, make a nice tidy version of it. And that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to use some framers tape. That's going to be our first port of call. And I'm going to tear off enough framers tape to go over the edge. Now, um, I'm going to have to be a little bit careful with this, with the placing of it. Because I don't really want the colour to wrap over the edge and equally I don't want there to be a no man's land between the texture and the colour around the side so this is going to take a little bit of poking around so I am going to line this framers tape up nice and neatly by running my thumb down the edge of it as I stick it down then I'm going to use my fingers I'm going to do something else with it in a minute but for the time being, that is all that it needs. So let's do those four sides. Let's take another length of tape off. Hi, Thyra. Uh, let's get that in. So we get it stuck on this end. And then I run my thumb down the edge of the canvas so that I can feel where I need to stick the tape. She said, not doing it very well at all. There we go. I think that's in the right place. Don't forget, you can t you'll can. you take, if you're doing this yourself, you take much more time than I'm going to. Uh, let's do those last uh, edges. I think that'll be all right. It'll be fine. It's acrylic. What can possibly go wrong? I can always paint over the top of it. Right, let's put this third edge in. So get that one stuck down because I know that's in the right place. I'm also trying to not get my head in the shot as well so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Run my... Oh, it's really lumpy there. 
that's quite tricky to do that bit so that's number three and then let's get the last one on <clears throat> um kathy is saying uh always wondered what i should do with those canvas edges usually ended up painting them yeah it's a bit of a, it's a personal choice really like all things to do with the presentation of your artwork same with picture framing you know picture framing decisions that you might absolutely love might be something that somebody else hates it is an aesthetic after all so i've taped those down let's put the tape to one side um, yes, Kathy is saying that her painting slopped over the edges. That is why I'm taping mine down, Kathy, because I will kind of go at it and then I won't think it through and then we'll, we'll be in trouble, won't we? So what I'm going to do is I've got uh, my craft knife here. Now, this is actually an old blade in the craft knife, which is why you can see I'm running my thumb over it without worrying too much. It's quite blunt and I do tend to keep uh, old blades for this very purpose. If I had a very sharp blade and I trimmed the edges, the danger would be that I wouldn't just go through the tape, that I would puncture my canvas as well. So um, I keep a, a few old blades so that I can go down and I can trim that edge. I don't need to press very hard. And then as you probably saw, I can uh, just run the, um, I haven't got enough room, not enough room to swing a bird this morning. Everything's in the way. Let me just do a little bit of tidying. There we go, then I can get it better into shot. Let's show you that again. So I've got my craft knife. I've got a little bit of pressure just running down the edge of my um, framers tape and then I can pull it and what I've got there is a nice neat and tidy corner. Still not um, as the, the last thing that I'm going to be doing to it but it's a start so you're just going to have to bear with me whilst I finish these little corners off. I should rattle around them quite quickly let's go for this one that's all right oh dear squished that one pull that back out it's good job i've got a wheelie chair so i can wheel my way around as i'm doing this that wasn't the best cut that you've ever done ali but it's all right that's the only disadvantage of having a blunt blade is that you don't always get the neatest tidiest cut that you can do Ooh, there's a bit more good morning anita anita pounder is in the room the um saa's resident uh in-house artist lovely to have you here anita thank you very much for joining us this morning so i got my framers tape got my knife pulling it around and then what i've got then is uh, nice corners to my masking off but 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 one more thing that i need to do to this because the danger is that my brush hairs might poke up under my bits of tape so i need to burnish this down and a uh, very high tech bit of kit that i need for this which is a teaspoon I'm not actually going to use the bowl of the teaspoon i'm going to use the handle now this is a teaspoon i know this is daft isn't it morning christine um that i actually just keep for artwork because it's got kind of nice rounded edges now you could use a bone folder i couldn't actually find my bone folder this morning and i thought oh actually do you know what teaspoon will do the job perfectly so we won't worry about it uh, too much um hillary p is saying that she is late to the party because her whippet decided uh that it needed attention you can only have that conversation in a learning to paint group can't you right here's uh my teaspoon and i'm using the edge of it to burnish that framers tape down i'm not worried about this part of it i'm only really worried about the edge of it um, and then this way, hopefully, you can actually see where it starts to change colour. You know, it's making really good contact with the canvas. So we'll get that down. You can kind of, if it goes a bit over the edge, you can roll it that way. So let's get that in. Now, if you've just joined us, uh, this is a live broadcast going out uh, on the Learning to Paint with Alison Seaboard Facebook page. And it's an extended one this morning because uh, there won't be a Technique Tuesday next week. I'm sorry about that. Mum and I are off on our adventures. Morning, Jilly. And, uh, but I have got a challenge. I'm going to set you a challenge at the end of this broadcast today for you to all take part in to make up for the fact that I won't be broadcasting next week. 
there we go all burnished down and so what I've got is I can be fairly safe that I can paint the edges and we're not going to encroach on any of the canvas as I do that. So now I need uh, to decide what uh, colour I'm going to be using for that. So I'm going to pop that to one side. I'm going to get rid of my uh, some of my pens, tidy up my workspace because I'm a devil for making a mess. Here is that Frisk Tear Off palette um, that I've been using throughout the project. In actual fact, it's still the same sheet as last week because you can see where I was testing out my Posca pens on it. Now, why have I got this? I've got it because I sat there last night, as I do on a Monday, prepping my broadcast, trying to decide whether I wanted Prussian blue for the edges or whether I wanted the Mars black. And effectively, I went, well, black will be a bit harsh, and I'm not sure about that. And that blue's not quite the same blue as the blues that we're using. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mix the two together. Now, the danger of this, of course, is that I don't mix enough, but then that will just be a test of my colour mixing skills, won't it? So let's squeeze uh, some of this out. So we've got there, we've got the Prussian blue. I might need a bit more than that. Uh, pop that lid back on. These are the System 3 acrylics. The link for the System 3 acrylics is in a previous blog post. And then I've got uh, Mars Black. Now I'm not going to add masses of that because I don't want it to be black. The black's quite a powerful colour. And rather than using my brush to mix it and uh, wasting a lot of paint on the bristles of my brush, I'm going to use the handle of my brush to mix the two together so that hopefully I do not think that that is going to be enough colour. It's a funny thing, isn't it, judging how much colour you need. I mean, if we all knew how much colour we needed, it would be really easy, wouldn't it? But I don't think that's enough. Hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more Prussian blue back into it. Now, it might look black to you on your screen, but I promise you it is a really deep, navy you'll probably see it even better now that I've got um, a bit more of that Prussian blue in there so you have to give it a really good stir the handle of the brush doesn't mix it as well as the bristles obviously but it means that you're not wasting your paint by washing it out either so we'll uh, we'll give that a good old mix together and we'll tap the majority roll the majority off now we'll just clean the handle of the brush and then that means I'm not wasting so much paint. Now I do think that I potentially need to add a tiny bit of water to it. So I'm just going to get my water pot in. Now I don't want to make it all transparent so that it needs two coats. What I'm just going to do is I'm going to dip my brush, let's get it out of the logo, dip my brush into the water and then what I'm going to do is squeeze the bristles so a bit of that water, we don't want a lot, again, so that you're not using the bristles uh, to mix it together. What I've got is sort of, I don't know, six or seven um, drops going on in there. So this time I'm going to mix it a little bit slowly. I don't want necessarily um, to be slopping it around. So I'm going to take some time and care with this. Let's just uh, give that a really good uh, mix around whilst we're doing that. Let's give uh, that a bit of a go. Oh dear, what's that doing? No, <laughs> had a bit of a technical glitch there. There we go. <clears throat> Folding that in uh, nice and neatly. There we go, that's better. So we've got that going on. And I can see that it's a, a nice rich navy blue again. Tap that handle off, roll it to one side and then uh, clean it off on the handle and it's all good to go. So now that that's uh, ready to uh, be put on the edge, I can load my brush up. I don't have to waste any paint, coat the bristles of the brush and I can get that colour in. Now I'm not going to slop it on too much again. I'm going to give it a thin coat of colour, but I'm not going to press. See what happens when you press too hard. Can you see that you get kind of light patches in there? So I'm going to be quite careful with it. A nice light stroke is required. And then that way 
the colour will cover and I probably won't need to do two coats. So let's make our way around this canvas Ooh, in the corners. Corners are always tricky on canvas where the fabric is actually folded in. So we'll get this one in and then I'm going to do a little bit of fast forwarding as far as this project is concerned because I'm going to dry each side as I go. Then I won't get covered in paint. But the chances are if you were doing this yourself, you'd paint two or three sides, you'd let them dry before you did the last one. So there we go. You've got that nice even coverage going on brush down I'm having to multitask like you wouldn't believe today let's get the heat gun in and then let's give that a quick blast to dry it you can see it's quite shiny at the moment um, I will know that it's dry when the shine goes off it so I'm continually moving the heat gun so that I don't burn it there you go. Can you see the difference there? You can see we've got a kind of a dry line going on. That works. It won't be 100% dry because acrylic tends to surface dry first. And you need to leave it a little bit of time to cure and go off. Let's get that in. There we go, that'll do. Certainly dry enough for me to handle. Now, which way round? Let's do it uh, clockwise. Now, why is that important? I promised you, didn't I, in Technique Tuesday, that I would say the things out loud that I was thinking. Now, the reason that I'm trying to decide whether I do this side now or this side now is because I don't really want to overhandle that. OK, so if I move it so that I'm going anti-clockwise around my canvas, I've then got to stick my hand over either what is wet paint or paint that is still drying and curing. So I'm going to turn it uh, clockwise round and then um, I don't have to worry. I've got uh, just a rough edge here. And then by the time I get back to the start, it will all be dry. So I know that's a, a sort of a really overthinking daft thing possibly that some of you are thinking blimey Ali that's quite a lot of detail to go into but sometimes I think we rush through these decisions and you don't necessarily understand why I've made that decision or the reason behind me um, thinking it and sometimes of course I just do it automatically and um, you're looking at me thinking, well, why has she decided to do that? So I promised you, didn't I, that Technique Tuesday, I would always try to say out loud the things that I was thinking. Uh, I've probably got too much paint here now. <laughs> I've overdone it. I find acrylic paint so much harder to judge quantity than I do watercolour. Watercolour, I can judge pretty well how much I'm going to need. But acrylic, I struggle with judging. Uh, so let's get those light strokes. I'm sort of dusting the surface. And there you've got that nice even coverage going on. So brush down again and then let's repeat that process. Actually, I've got a bit of a blob going on here. So I'm going to thin that out with my finger. Because now I've made it too pale. Now I've got to go back in with a brush. There we go. But it's got rid of the blob. Otherwise, that was going to take ages to dry. Morning, Linda. So, let's get this drying off. So it's drying off quite quickly with a heat gun. You'll probably find it dries faster than with a hair dryer. There we go, and that's very warm. It's not too bad, a little bit of streaking going on in there. Didn't do the best job that I could, so let's give that a bit of a touch up. Shouldn't really paint back into it whilst it's uh, still warm, but rules are for breaking, aren't they? So let's get that on and we can give that another dry.
There we go, that'll do. If you're doing this, you'll take a lot more time and care than I have with mine. Right, so uh, side number three, bear with me while I do this. Um, I know it's not the most gripping thing to be watching, but hopefully this will help you with um, box canvases that you want to finish off in the future. And um, Ali uh, has been has made a very pertinent comment um, in the live chat on Facebook. Uh, she said, never thought of this before, have always left it uncovered as it doesn't show on a tray frame. So a tray frame is one of those really deep uh, frames where you can mount a box canvas in it and you don't necessarily see the sides. But um, as she quite rightly points out, this means that you don't necessarily need to frame it, that it's kind of finished, and the potential is that it can be hung straight onto the wall. Um, I've never been a massive fan of framing box canvases myself. I quite like uh, the look of them as they are, but I know that's, again, it's an aesthetic and not to everybody's taste. So I think sometimes when you get to this point in a painting and you're fairly sure that it's uh, a relative success and it's something that uh, you're potentially going to want to hang on your wall or possibly sell in an exhibition, then uh, it is worth kind of thinking ahead a little bit as to how you're going to present it. Morning, Linda D. Not only have we got a lot of Anne's in the room, we've got a lot of Linda's in the room this morning. <laughs> if it's an anarchy of Anne's, what is it for Linda's? <laughs> I'll let you decide that. So we'll get this penultimate one finished. Sounds like Fran is having issues with her internet this morning. Yes, absolutely, my lovely. Catch up later. Now I've come to the last side, look. And uh, this side is all nice and dry now, so I can hold on to that without any fear of disturbing that paint or getting it all over my pores or whatever it is. So let's go to that last side. I did mix up way too much paint, but you know what? What I will probably do is I'll find an old jam jar or a pot or something uh, to pop it in. I'll make sure, particularly if it's in a jam jar, that I put a little wax disc or a bit of greaseproof paper inside of it so that it doesn't form too much of a skin and then that will just go into my acrylic paint box. Um, just be mindful of the fact that I've been doing some reading recently with about the disposal of acrylic paints. You really don't want to wash acrylic paint down your sink or as little as possible. You don't really want to put it back into the water system because it is effectively a plastic. So uh, try to reuse your paints wherever you can or use a stay wet palette if you know that you're going to be doing something else with it. Or like I said, save your old jam jars because um, it's a good way of recycling them too if you think about it. And uh, then this dark blue might be the perfect colour to be used in another project. So let's uh, get that finished off and we will dry that last one off so yes yeah, sally say, sally saying wax disc i'm thinking that she's meaning she either means wax disc because she knows what i'm talking about or wax disc like you would use for jam making that you pop in the top of your jam before you seal it down with the lid so let's get this last side dry I can see that a couple of you are having issues with uh, the Facebook page. If you reload the page at the top, we have discovered in the past that usually gets rid of any gremlins that are going on. Our uh, Sally is saying wax disc question mark because she didn't know. Does that make more sense now, Sally, that the sort of wax disc that you might use for jam making? I'm sure you'd make jam always, all the time, obviously. <laughs> I don't make jam, that's what farmer's markets are for. Right, so what we've got are uh, four sides of the canvas, relatively uh, well covered, 
a slightly dodgy bit going on down there but actually oh there's a damp bit i found a damp bit right let's just dry that before i do anything smug like take the masking tape off i think that might be because there's a bit on the table down here yeah look at that right so that's all dry and uh, i'm do you know what? i'm just going to leave that i'm going to do uh oh, um i'm just going to do a put, put that to one side actually i'm going to pop it on the floor and then hope that i remember to pick it up before i let the dogs back in the studio after the broadcast so what we've got now you can see where the paint has uh, here and there gone over the edge and you can also see that in some places uh, the paint is still wet so very important that you make sure that all the paint is dry before you remove the tape because you don't want to peel a bit of tape off and then dunk paint back into your very precious canvas so let's give it another bit of a blast from the front we'll just make sure that everything is as dry as it can be that'll do Okay, now we need to peel the tape off. Now, if this was watercolour, um, we'd need to be so careful with how we peeled it off for damaging the paper. Now, I'm not saying that uh, you don't need to be careful in peeling the tape off uh, this surface, but I think you don't have to be quite so bothered about it. I'm using my knife. I'm not cutting anything. I'm just peeling the edge up. And what I'm going to do... Oh, yeah, look. Oh, it's peeled a bit of paint off. That's all right. We can sort that out in a second oh it has peeled a bit of the texture off oh we are going to need to take care of that ali never mind that's what these things are all about isn't it i think what's probably happened is uh where the um heat has uh, stuck it so what i'm going to do is you like to see it when i have to fix things don't you i'm actually going to use my heat gun to heat the masking tape as I peel it and then I'm hoping that it won't pull so much of the texture off it is pulling a little bit off but never mind oh do you know what isn't it funny how sometimes you have a bit of a serendipitous moment I know what I'm going to do with those edges I know exactly what I'm going to do with those edges in a minute this is certainly better using the heat gun I'm just trying not to heat my hand up <laughs> oh overheated it it has I'm not actually sure that the heat gun's making a difference but I'm not going to worry about that I think it's because where I use, I, if you saw this back from the start, I used so much texture when I was laying down my initial layers that um, it's just sort of peeling the paint off the surface. I mean, to be fair, it's giving it a bit of an antique look, but I have a master plan. Don't worry. I'm certainly not. I know a few of you um, either email me or write to me or say to me in class, Oh my goodness, Ali, when it all goes wrong, live on camera, what do you do? And the answer is that what's the point of worrying about it? What's the point of panicking about it? It's just a thing that's happened. I could go back in and paint them all in if I really wanted to, but I'm not going to because I've had another idea. What I am slightly concerned about is how I'm going to get this last bit of masking tape off. There we go. Peeled that last bit off the bottom. Let's get this last piece off. Now, you might notice that I'm sort of peeling away from the centre. I'm actually doing that on purpose. That's a bit of a residue technique from when you take masking tape off of uh, watercolour paper. Ah, dear, lots of people saying don't panic on the live chat. I'm not. I'm really, really not. I know sometimes that I, I think some of you, uh, if this potentially happened to you, you think, oh, well, that's it then. I've ruined it. I never, ever think that. It's just an opportunity to do something else to it. And actually, there is an argument, of course, for going back over this 
um, with something like an emery board or an emery stick and actually exposing some of the white canvas underneath. Good morning, Amanda. Um, so it is, uh, it is what it is, but I have a master plan. So what we've got now is, um, regardless of the bits of paint that come off, we've got nice neat edges to our canvas. And actually, I really like uh, the colour that I've chosen. It's sort of not black and not blue, it's, it's somewhere in the middle. And actually it's showing up these paler blue tones a little bit more. So to finish it off, like I said, this is an extended broadcast today because unfortunately there is no Technique Tuesday next week. Um, I am going to be uh, off and away with my mum on some um, inspirational adventures, hopefully. Uh, COVID and all of that aside. So I'm doing you an extra long broadcast today and I'm going to set you a challenge at the end of today um, for something that you can take part in next Tuesday. Now what am I going to use to finish this off? There is an argument that it's absolutely fine as it is but if you go over to the blog, if you go over to www.learningtopaint.co.uk forward slash technique hyphen Tuesday you will read more about why um, I've got to this point with my painting and the reasons why I'm about to use the product that I am. Now let's introduce it to you. This is called Inca Gold. Um, it is a very thick consistency paint. Let's take the lid off. Now why is it called Inca Gold? They're all called Inca Gold, right? But look at, look how delicious and metallic and shiny is that. So that is the gold. It comes in a variety of colours. If you want to know where to find it, you need to go over to the blog. I'll show you where to find that just at the end of the broadcast. So I'm going to use the gold and then Kel Surprise, even though this is called Inca Gold. Are you ready for this? Needs a drum roll. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that delightful? Um, so yeah, we've got uh, a violet there too. And um, I've actually got, but I'm probably not going to use today, uh, two other colours. I've got uh, a platinum and I've got a, uh, a green yellow as well. I don't even know that I've taken the lids off these yet. Because I don't know. I didn't, I knew I wasn't going to uh, use these today, so I haven't taken the lids off them. And if you want to find out about where I got them, why I got them, and why they've been sitting on my table taunting me for the last six months, go over to the blog and read more about them. So, uh, I'm going to, do you know what? I was going to start with the gold, and that was the only colour I was going to use, but I'm actually going to start with the violet. So, can you see now why, when all of this uh, came off around the edges, that I wasn't that bothered? Now, you could put it on with a soft cloth if you wanted to. I am not going to do that. What I'm going to do is use my finger, because that, to me, is the most effective tool. So what I'm going to do, I'm just using this uh, part of the lid to add some to my finger. Look how metallic that is. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, what's not to get excited about that? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that colour over the edge in some of the places. Not all over, probably. I'm going to run it just in little bits here and there to give just that little bit of a metallic sheen. Now over here in places where some of the texture has come away. Let's get a bit more on my finger. Oh, I'm covered in it this morning. Uh, we can bring out some, I've got my head in shot, sorry about that. Um, we can bring out some of the texture whilst pushing back some of those areas where the paint peeled off. Now, if I get that into the light, can you see that? Got a nice shine and looks like my mum has just popped up in the room too. Morning mum. I, uh, I peeled paint off my canvas mum. <laughs> oh dear. Um, let's get a little bit more. Now do I want, yeah, let's put the, uh, let's put the lilac over the top of the blue. What's not to like about that? Um, what I could do, let's find, have I got a cheap and nasty brush somewhere here? Oh, do you know what? I haven't got a cheap and nasty brush. Mm, is my brush roll? Two seconds, I'm going to go and grab a brush. Nothing like running over to the other side of the studio during a live broadcast, is there? I'm going to get 
uh, a little brush. Let's get one of those as my a little bit of an insight into my oil and acrylic painting brushes. So uh, this is one of the um, SAA oil and acrylic brushes in a filbert. I'm loading it up on my brush because I want to sort of poke it in a few more holes than my finger is able to access. So uh, we'll load it up with a little bit of colour and we'll get that in and we'll use it to burnish some of the textural areas as well just down in this corner let's blend that out a little bit and then we'll turn it on its side uh, let's go back to the uh, finger method to get some of those and you can see hopefully now how that texture is coming forward because i'm picking out some of the areas of it and it's giving, it's metallic, but it's more of a sheen than a shine, um, which means that you kind of get this nice, can you see that in the corner now, this nice hit and miss over um, where I laid those textures down, which what seems like weeks and weeks and weeks ago now, um, which is weeks and weeks and weeks ago. Back to the brush, because my finger's not as accurate as I would like it to be. And we'll get that dusted in down here. Get the finger back in too. Let's do a little bit of tapping as well. That usually helps. And then those little bits of white that the masking tape peeled away are now starting to kind of blend in a bit more. There's one that really doesn't want to go away over there. Ah, it'll be all right, won't it? It'll be fine. As my mum will tell you, that is my motto. It'll be fine. Applies to everything in life that you don't really want to have to think about or worry about. It'll be fine. Let's get a little bit down in this corner. I was actually, I didn't peel anything away uh, down here. It's good to uh, kind of match the corners up. So what we've got is uh, a bit of that kind of lilac-y shine going on now. Thank you, Ali. That's very kind. My mama said, oops. <laughs> Sums it up perfectly. Let's get uh, some of that texture sorted out. You see, and what's happened now is a bit of serendipity, isn't it? something that could have made me go oh, well that's a complete disaster has actually now turned into an element that i really really enjoying i wasn't going to use the violet like i said i was going to use the gold and i'll show you what i was going to do with it in just a second um but where i did of course i was going to buy a violet when i saw these creams because why wouldn't you um it's now uh, playing into my hands rather nicely so um, we've got some mirror tiles under here, which you can probably, yeah, you've got a bit of a glint of them there. And then we'll finish that off. Not so much needed up at the top where it's paler. And then we've kind of got that nice shimmery shine going on. Um, and Shani has seen into my cunning plan. So the thing that I was going to do with the gold uh, to pick out some of the texture on the bird is that I'm going back in with that gold colour and going to pick out some of these textures but I do need to be really careful with it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little pad of um, paper look at the state of this now mum's not surprised my manicurist will be crying but uh, mum's not surprised so I'm going to load uh, my finger up with some of this cream you can see it's really kind of quite hard and sticky it is um, water-based so uh, you don't have to worry about getting it onto your hands at all uh, and then I'm going to take off the excess onto the kitchen roll so that I've got a nice even coverage then uh, I'm going to very lightly dust over the top just here and there we've got some of that copper acrylic going on underneath and I'm going to pick out just a few bits here and there and you'll start to see that texture emerging on the surface. I'm not entirely convinced I want it there. So um, I've got my water pot here and I'm going to dunk my uh, ring finger into the water and where I've put it and it's a little bit too bright, I can add some water back into them and just disperse that metallic so it's not the be all and end all if you put it in the wrong place you don't have to over worry about it or overthink it because you can re-wet them and actually just pull the color off again look at that 
I'm liking that an awful lot. Right, which finger's the finger for the water? Um, Caroline is uh, saying that she's liking this uh, project. And I just saw a question come in as I'm doing this. <clears throat> Andrea has asked, never painted with acrylic. This picture looks a bit ambitious for a beginner. What would you recommend? So, um, Andrea, just in case you haven't uh, seen this from the start, I do take you through it step by step over on the blog. You can watch all of the past broadcasts so that it talks you through it. But I understand that uh, it might look a little bit daunting. I would recommend that you just go at your own pace. Just start off perhaps maybe doing a few bird studies. You could sketch them or draw them. You could have a look at, um, you could pop over to my Facebook page because I've just done an owl study in a pastel workshop that I did weekend just past. But uh, yeah, absolutely, Andrea, don't scare yourself if you're looking at this thinking, okay, that's great, but not entirely sure about what I'm going to do with it. So uh, keep it small, maybe do a few texture experiments with your acrylic first, then possibly uh, do a few bird studies, have a play with the materials, see what they can do, but do it in uh, what we would call in class jigsaw puzzle steps. So you experiment with the textures, you experiment with the paint, you experiment with what it is uh, to paint a bird, all of those kind of things. And then at the end, just like a jigsaw puzzle, you try to bring it all together. Just depends on your patience level, depends on how much time you want to uh, give to it, all of those types of things. But um, Andrea, don't ever be put off by something looking too ambitious. Have a go and if it doesn't work, that's fine. It doesn't matter. What you will do is learn from every time you pick up a brush, even if the painting that uh, you uh, create at the end of it isn't something that you're particularly thrilled with, you will have understood much more about your materials or about how to paint a bird, all of that type of thing. So I hope that answers your question. Do let me know if um, I can be of any further assistance. So this is starting to uh, just come together now, isn't it? Uh, I think I'll do a little bit more down there and then you're all going to have to shout stop faffing at me because this is too much fun to do. <laughs> it's just it what's not to like about smearing gold paint on top of uh, a canvas that you've been working on for weeks and look at all those textures coming through. Isn't that delicious? So I think... I need to call it a day. She said not calling it a day. Um, what I also want to do just here and there, I had these uh, bees. I'm going to hold it up into the camera. Can you see the bees in the background of the bird? Julia's saying, put your finger down. <laughs> oh dear. Um, Andrea, you're very welcome. Um, I, I want to pick out just little elements of the bee because... Um, most of you will know that the bee is a really important symbol to me. Um, it uh, sums up so much in my life with uh, my friends and with my husband and my love of Manchester, all of those types of things. So I want to pick out those bee shapes here and there. Not all of them. Don't want to overdo it. Just want to pick out a few of those little elements. And of course, we can't just have two of them. You could do, you could use three. And Paula, the good news is, yes, absolutely, you can use these with watercolour. Haven't quite got to the end of all of my experiments yet, but um, there's no reason at all why you couldn't use it over the top of texture in watercolour. And I am going to take Julie's advice and I am going to step away. Um, Ruth is asking, could you get the same result with Pebio Metallic? Ruth, if you're, because um, Pebio do several metallic products. If you're talking about their creams, 
I have, I, I do know of them. I haven't used them enough to be able to advise you better. But what's the worst thing that could happen? Experiment. See what happens with them. And so there you have it. That is the conclusion of my Concert of Birds painting. Now, I might varnish it. I might absolutely varnish it. Um, but I haven't decided on that yet. Um, varnishing, uh, I struggle with a little bit because um, I don't always like the finish of it. But I have just purchased a new spray varnish. I promise that if um, I do anything else with this, I will let you all know. And I know that some of you want to see some of this in close up so that you can see some of the metallic. So let's just give it a move around. There's that little B highlighted on there. You can see those textures that went down right at the start, bit of that text coming through. We've got the mirror uh, tile in there. Um, Andrea's asking what's the benefit of varnishing, just to seal the surface really, so that nothing else can happen to it. And if it does get hung on the wall, then of course it gives you the opportunity to dust it and clean it in the future. So there we've got the head with the bits of gold uh, coming through and there's uh, one of the bees. And then what else have we got down here in the bottom left hand corner? Um, you can see the bit of text uh, coming through. We've got that bee um, motif got that single mirror tile and all of the textures so I hope um, that gives you a little bit of uh, detailing in the overall picture. I will uh, put a photograph of this up onto my social media. I will do you a much higher resolution so that you can see it in a little bit more detail. But I do hope uh, that you have enjoyed following along. Now, don't go away. I have a challenge for you. Now, what's the challenge? So, like I said... Next week, uh, next Tuesday, uh, well, at the time that Technique Tuesday would ordinarily go out, uh, Mum and I are off on our jollies. And I did think about all sorts of things, because you know me, I don't like to let you down uh, of a Tuesday. And I thought, brilliant, brilliant idea. I do sometimes have them to encourage you to create a concert of birds on the social media pages. So this is what you need to do next Tuesday at 10 o'clock. And don't worry, I'm going to remind you uh, next Tuesday at 10 o'clock. What I would like you to do is on the Learning to Paint with Alison Seaborge, which, which if you are watching this live, you are already there on this page upload your own bird painting or if you're not confident enough to put a bird painting up maybe a photograph that you're very happy for other people to share to paint from in the future but what I want to create is a whole concert of birds on there now please don't worry if you've only been painting for a small amount of time I promise you that the comments that you get on the page will be encouraging they will be supportive it will make you feel really good about your painting you know the lovely community of people that we have on this page they're only ever going to say nice things and the reason is because they've all been where you are they all had to start off somewhere so it doesn't matter if you are fantastically proficient or you've only been painting a couple of weeks the idea is to have a go to upload a picture onto the Facebook page and uh, we'll create that concert of birds and whilst I won't necessarily see it what I am going to do is look forward to when I get back uh, from my travels next week week uh, mum and I are going to have a look at them and see what we can see in your work now uh, lots of people saying uh, uh, to have a good time in my mum thank you very much indeed lots of people loving saying that they like the Technique Tuesday now just because I'm taking a week off don't worry Technique Tuesday is not disappearing I am going to be back on the 30th of November with a brand spanking new Technique Tuesday uh uh, what's the word experiment because even I don't know what it is yet mum and I are going away to get a little bit of fresh inspiration we're going to go and see uh, hopefully something that is going to fill me and inspire me with a little bit of winter Christmassy kind of uh, enthusiasm 
for the new project. So just to remind you, just in case you're not sure of where you need to go onto the website to find all of these resources. Let's get the right window up. So here you go. Here is the Learning to Paint Facebook page. If you put www.learningtopaint.co.uk into your browser, this is what you will find. You need to go to the free resources bit. Now yours might look slightly different if you're viewing it on a mobile or a tablet, but there you go, Technique Tuesday. You click onto that. Now actually, the today's broadcast, um, the blog is already there. The video's not there yet if you're watching it live because we're in the middle of recording it, but there's all the information about uh, the creams and why I got there. And there is the link just there for where you can find them. And there is also all the details of the Concert of Birds challenge that I have set you. So next Tuesday, the 23rd of November, share your bird paintings onto the page. And then hopefully we can create a veritable flock of birds all coming together. How exciting will that be? So that's it from me for a couple of weeks. Thank you very much if you've watched all of these artistic intuition sessions where we created my concert of birds painting. I'm going to leave you with a shot of the painting and I promise you that I will upload a better picture to the Learning to Paint Facebook page so that you can have a look at it in detail. But until I see you in a couple of weeks, take lots of care everybody. Bye! <laughs>